Welcome class to the greater project. This is a video that's dedicated to helping you navigate greater one in our CSA 105. This is Rob. I'm your faculty member for this course. The first thing you see is the greater instruction. For you to pull all this up and anything that you are about to see, you're going to have to use the downloads in the greater project. That's a separate video that I have placed in Blackboard for you to see. Let's get started. Step one. Step one is to download and open the file named GO16WD Chapter 1 Greater 1G. It says it right here and I have opened that. And here's the actual file. You can see exactly that it says the chapter one greater one homework. Okay, that's exactly what we're looking to do. This is a blank word file. Step two, type educational website. And I'll do that right now. Educational websites. And then it says press enter. So now I have completed the first part of step one. Or excuse me, step two. Type in Sturgeon Point Production is offering website tie-ins with every educational video title in our category at no additional cost. So I'm going to get that typed in. And then after that, after the period, it says press space bar. And then insert the text from the greater data file. And that is... Very specifically, it says the GOW1 Greater H3 Education Doc. So what it's asking is that I insert the text from that data file. Let's do that now. We're going to insert at this insertion point. Here's the cursor to insert. I'm going over to the text box. Now I just want you to notice that we have a home tab and then next to that is the insert tab. Anytime you hear the word insert, you're going to go to this tab for inserting a variety of things from pictures to media, headers and footers. But for this case specifically, we're going to text from file. Uh, the goal here is to insert very specifically that H3, that greater H3. See that? I'm highlighting it now. I'm going to insert this and I'm going to hit the insert button. And look what it's done. It's inserted everything that was in that file. Now we're on step three. Change the line spacing for the entire document to 1.5 and the spacing after to 6.5. Point. That's the first thing we're going to be doing for step three. In order to do that, we'll go to the Home tab. In the Home tab, we'll go to the Paragraph section, and you'll notice it says Line and Paragraph Spacing. It asks that we do a 1.5 for the entire document. In order to do the entire document, I'm going to do a Select All or Control A. Then I'll go in and do the 1.5. The next section, or the after to six point, what you have to do with this is select all. I'm going to go into the line spacing options. I want you to take a quick look all the way down. Spacing. So this is after to six point. So here's after, and it says 8 now, but I'm going to hit 6. I'm going to hit OK. And that completes that first sentence in step 3. Now, the next part. To each of the four paragraphs that begin with the Sturgeon Point production as educators when submitting, what, we, what we're going to do is apply a first line indent of point 5. 
the paragraph button has been activated and you can see that it says indention and we need to get it to 0.5 on the first line. So I'm going to do 0.5. You can see the bottom says Sturgis Point Production, and that's the first one we needed to do. So I'm going to hit OK. I'll do the same thing here, but I could also hit Tab. And the reason for that is it's going to move over to the same exact line as the sturgeon for the tab. However, we need to make sure that's the same case for each one. So I'm going down the line and adding to the beginning of each paragraph. Now that I've completed each one of the tabs, which brings me exactly to a, the same indent as the Sturgeon Point Productions. That's been completed. The next part we're going is step four. Change the font size of the title to 50. The font size of the title. So here's the title. And I'm going to change it to the font size of 50. So under font. And you notice it's not here. It's 48. So I'll go to 48 and I'll increase the size either by pressing it or hitting the button to 50. So I'm typed in 50. There it is. And then the title line spacing to point, oh, excuse me, one point. So let's do that right here. Let me get my, make sure I'm highlighted. And then the next thing is center of the title. Which is right here, center line under paragraph. From the text effects in topography gallery, apply the effect fill blue accent yellow. So let's do that now. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to the text effects right here. And it's going to be very specific. So you have to just hover over the areas you want. So this is blue accent one shadow. That's exactly what's look what you're looking for. You'll notice that if you hover over other areas, it has very specific details as well. By just hovering over, you'll see the names. So I'm going to click on that. And I've completed that. Next, there's a note. It says, depending on the version of Office, the effect name may be blue uh, or, an, or one or shadow. So keep that in mind. But right now, we're going to stick with the blue shadow accent one. Okay, step five. Next point is insert. Again, we're going to the insert tab. And we're going to insert the picture downloaded from our file. So we're going to insert the picture. Now the picture has been inserted. Change the picture height to 2 inches. The picture height. So in order to do that, you can do a right click and then you can go into size and position. The height is two, so I will do that. There's the two inches. The next part is going to the layout options to square. You'll see that there's this little right hand box it says layout options. So I'm going to click on that. When I look down, I'm looking very specifically for the option of square. You can see that clearly here by hovering. However, you can see the other ones behind text, top, through. So I'm going to hit square. And then format the picture with a 10 point soft edges effect. Okay, so let's do that as well. Click away. Click on, I'll double click on the photo itself or the image. Big one here is 10 point edge. So if you want to do an effect, look for the words. Those are the key things or the words that they're telling you. So we are looking for soft edges, soft edges. And I'm looking for a 10 point soft edge. 
That completes step five. Step six, use the position command to display the layout dialog box. So here's the format. If you don't see it, you can click on the picture. The format comes up and the position is shown right here, position object. Now this is the command area and we need to display this. We need to take this picture and move it horizontal alignment to the right. Okay, so by clicking in there, you can hover over position to the right. And do that and then change the vertical alignment relative to the line. I'll do that now. You'll see that I'm going to open up the actual dialog box for layout under that position. And we have to look at it clearly here and change that vertical alignment, which is right here, vertical alignment, to the top just like it says, uh, and it's relative to the line. So I'm going to do that here. Then I'm going to hit OK. That completes six. Now we're going to go on to seven, where it says select five paragraphs beginning with the historic interactive timeline and ending with quizzes and essays. And then apply check mark bullets. So let's do that. I'm going to go to that location starting with the history or historic to the quiz you see that I've highlighted all of it and now I'm going to go in and do the check boxes or the bullets this is the check click on it and I have completed step seven but I want you all to know you should be always looking at the final product of what it's going to look like. I, I give this to you each week. This is the solution guide. So we've gotten, excuse me, we're get to the point where we're on our seventh. And I'd like just to make sure that I have relatively what they've said completed. So look at this. I have the photo. I have the blue educational websites. And I have these checkpoints done. This is what it's going to look like and it looks like I'm on a uh, task to complete this correctly. So I'm moving that off to the side. Usually you'll print those. Let's go over to number eight where we're going to locate the paragraph below the bulleted list. Then click after the colon. Here it is. Press enter and it removes that first line and then it says type a numbered list. So here's the numbered list. I'm going to do that now. Copy that. Here's the list. I'm going to highlight it and set the indentation of the three. So I'm going to set the indentation. I want you to notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the indentation here. To be specific, you're going to actually go in and do this manually as opposed to this this one way which is a the quick and easy way usually is done on the top bar but we're going to go a little deeper by going right click into paragraph and by doing that we're going to type a numbered list here you can see the paragraph I was right clicking let me show you quickly right click and in the right click I can go to paragraph and at this point it says indention is 0.25 so just simply write 25 on the left and ensure that the special setting is hanging at 0.25 so hanging hanging 0.25 now I'll hit OK see the change there it is moving on to number nine The keyword is insert, so I'm going to insert basic chevron. This is the first time many people are hearing this type of terminology. So just be aware that you may not have ever heard of a basic chevron process. This is located specifically under the smart art. I'm going to click on that, and now we're going to look for the process. Here's the process, 
and I'm going to try to hover over, I will hover over each one of the areas to find where that chevron is going to be. And here's the basic chevron. I'm going to hit OK. And there is what I was looking for. Now the next part of 9 is to create a second shape. Excuse me. The first part of the shape we're going to type in view. So I'm going to click in view. The second part. This is the second shape. We're going to write interact. The last one is going to be assess. That completes that section. Now select the outside border of the smart art. There's the outside border. I'm going to go up. I have it highlighted now, but I'm going to go up to changing the colors. It says the outside border of the smart art to a color range of 4 or 5, and then apply the 3D flat scene. It's a lot, but let's go and do it. Here we go. So we're going to go into accent range, colorful range of 4 to 5. Here it is, 4 to 5. I click on that. It also then says that we have to do a 3D flat scene. So let's just do that. I'm going to take a look over here at the styles. And I'm going to look for a 3D flat. So hover over. Let's see what I get. Here's a flat scene under the 3D. Flat scene. Okay. So that's exactly what we're looking for is a flat scene 3D. It looks like I made a mistake. So I'm going to control Z. And I'm going to make sure that everything's highlighted and now I'll go in and do that flat scene. That completes number nine. We're going over to ten. We're halfway. Th We're going to change the height. So what does that mean? Use this little menu or box on this right hand side. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go down for see more because it has more details. It very specifically says we have to go to smart art size of one inch. So I do that. And then the width is going to be 6.5. I've completed that section, but I also have to notice that I have to do horizontal alignment. So that's going to be in a position area, horizontal alignment. Before I do it, I just skipped over one quick sentence where I have to take the option, the layout option to square. So I'm going to use this button over here. I'm going to find square. I have now completed. Now we move on to the horizontal alignment to centered relative to the page. I brought out the layout in order to do that. Again, we go into this box right here. We go into see more. And at this point, we look for a horizontal alignment. Here it is. Horizontal alignment center relative to the page. And the vertical alignment. And that's going to be alignment to the bottom relative to the margin. I've completed step 10. Hit OK. There it is. Now we're going on to number 11. Select the days and times at the end of the document. So let's go do that first. Select the days and times at the end of the document and then set a right tab with dot leaders. Okay. So let's do that now. This part's a bit tricky because most people don't go too deep into the tab section, but you're going to notice that set a right tab with dot leaders 
at 6 inches. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go into the paragraph. And if you'll notice at the bottom of this paragraph section of the tabs, click on this box. I'm going to hit the tabs. And it says tab stop position. I'm going to set the 6. I'm going to do the right with the leads. And we hit OK. Step 12, here we are, where we're going to click on, I'm going to move the instructions over for a moment so you can see this. I'm going to click in the blank line below the tab list and then center the line. Okay, so let's do that. Let's click in the line below and do it now. Do that, I clicked it. And then center the line. So we'll go over into home and center the line. Now the next part is I'm going to insert an online video. Insert online video and it says YouTube and I have to paste. The, I copied it previously but you could also type in Pearson Higher Education Learning. So I'm going to do that. And then it's this is the image you want right here with the little two trees and this little pad. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit insert. And it says after you insert the video, change the video height to 1.5. So I'm going to go into this options section again. I'm going to go into more and we're going to do 1.5 for the size. So let's do that. The height 1.5. Hit OK. There's the video. It looks like that. I'm going to just confirm. I want to show you that I have the final solution guide right here, and you'll notice the the same thing. It's right under Saturday. The image is there. Uh, it looks exactly the way it should look. So that's what the final product is. If you're confused or worried, it's there for you. Next up, we're going to move away uh, and move down on step 12. And notice that the Mac users, you're going to have to read this for any of the Mac users on how to actually add this into the wrapping style. Next up is 13, step 13. We're going to insert, again, the, the word is important. So insert, and I'm going to insert a shape. The shape is rounded rectangle shape. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to move that shape in right here. It says select height to 1.5 and a width of 6.5. So I'm going to go back to that layout option, and I'm going to do the height again at 1.5. The width is going to be 6.5. And then it says display the shape style gallery and apply the subtle effect of blue accent one. So let me just get out of this after I hit OK. And the shape effect. So shape style gallery, shape style gallery, shape style. OK. So let's take a look at that. And see what this is, is blue accent one blue accent one style. There it is. I've completed number 13. We're going on to 14. Only six more sections left. So we're going to move that document, the options, hit save more and get the layout. Dialog box is now over here and it says change the position so that they both horizontal and vertical are centered and relative to the margin. So I want them centered relative to the margin and alignment that said vertical and horizontal. So we're going to be centered to the margin. That's what's being asked in the first section of step four. I'm going to hit OK. It centered it for us just enough. The next part is in the rectangle, oh, you're going to type in production, sturgeon, 
production. So I'm going to do that now. All right. And I'm going to actually just bring in that. I, I already copied it and I put it in, but you can type it. Then hit enter. Hit enter. And then type the partnering with educators to produce rich media content. And copy that. You could also type it. Excuse me. I'm all over the place here. Move that. And I'm going to insert. You just also just want to make sure that you're on 16. The font size is 16. So we will change that to 16. Done. 14. Uh, the step 14 is gone. Done. Well, we're going to go on that 15. We're going to move to the top of the document. So I'm going to go all the way up here and highlight. I think I got the wrong one. It says, uh, insert a text box above the title. So let's do that. A text box above the title. Now I'm going to insert a text box. Now, very carefully, we're going to look at putting in the information. So I'm going to put a, a text box right here. Just a simple text box, nothing else. So I have the information that I've already typed, so I'm pasting, pasting that in there. And then I'm going to change the font size to 22. So I'm going to go in here, change the font size to 22. There it is. Now we're done with 15. We're going on to number 16. Before we move on, my apologies, we're going to notice that the height of the text box and the width have to also be adjusted. So I'm going to go in to that layout option. And you notice the height is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And the width is going to be 3.7. The font size is already at 22 and center of the text. So I'll put that position as center. Hit OK. And there we go. Now we're done with 15. We're going to move on to 16. Use the position command to display the layout dialog box. And then position the text box so the horizontal alignment is centered relative to the page. And the vertical absolute position is 0.05 to the page. Here it is again. And in order to do that, we do the layout options, hit see more. And at this point, horizontal centered. And it says very specifically relative to the page. So alignment is centered relative to the page. And the vertical is absolute position absolute position and that's to the page position is 0 0.05 0 0.05 oh, excuse me 0.5 please notice I had to say 0.5 hit OK now we are done with 16 we're moving on to number 17 change the text box shape fill color so let's do that. Going up to the shape fill. Make a double click on this. And I'm going to go to shape fill. That's under the format. It pops up when you double click on something on one of the images. So shape fill. And it says we're going to blue accent five. Let's take a look. Where's blue accent five? That's light blue. That's just regular blue. Here's blue accent one. And I'll move around till I see where I where this actual accent five is located. There we go. And now it also says 80% lighter. So what does that mean? There's 40%, 60%, 80%. Change the shape outline to the same color. So now I'll double click on it again just in case 
in the shape outline. I'm going to find that same one, blue accent, five, lighter. That's done. 17 is completed. We're moving on to number 18. So we're going to deselect the box that we had originally done, the sturgeon with that little blue box. We're going to deselect it by just clicking somewhere else. Now we're going to apply a box setting. In order to do that, we're going to go up to this page borders. It says change the color to blue accent 5. So we'll go over here. And I'm going to go to the border. Changing the color to the accent blue 5, which is that same thing that we had over here. Accent blue 5. Accent blue 5. Click on that. It's box. It's blue. I'm going to hit OK. Let's just take a quick moment to stop and just look at to see if the final product is looking uh, correct. And so the solution guide, if you notice, looks very similar. So we're in a good position right now with some minor tweaks that we'll have in the, in the next few steps. It now says take a change the top margin to 1.25. Now margins, those are under layout. So we're going to go over and hit the custom margins. It says top. So we're going to do 1.25. I'm going to hit OK. The last thing we want to do is insert the file name in the footer. So I'm going to insert. I'm going to find where it says footer right here. Now, at this point, the footer, we just want to write in file name footer. So I'm going to put this in and insert file name. Under document information, I've accomplished that. We're wrapping up. We're going to do a save and close the document. I'm going to do a file save. I'm going to close the document. This is the part where we've completed the grader. It takes a bit of time to do this. When you're now done, you're going to upload and have it graded. That's a different video. That video is in Blackboard under the syllabus resources. Please take a look at how to upload to Grader and then get your assignment graded. Thank you. Now that I submitted the work, I received a 90. This is something that we will all experience is that we'll read the instructions and may not get everything correct. This is why you can resubmit your work. I want to show you my errors and I will correct those errors. One thing that you'll see is this red arrow. I'm going to bring this up a little bit easier for you to see. In this red arrow, I'm going to click on it. It's going to tell me exactly what I did wrong, where I didn't earn my points. I'm going to click right here. It tells you specifically what you did right and wrong. And then you can go in and fix it within that area. So I've gone along through each one of these and I'm going to fix the sections. So if you received a 90 like I did here and correct all of those, you can get higher than the 90. You can do this many times over and get the highest grade possible. Good luck. Have a good day and we'll see you at the next video.